Hello, my name is John Coonrod with Rogers Corporation and I'm a technical marketing manager. Today I'm going to talk to you about test methods, uh, more specifically test methods that are commonly used to determine dielectric constant and uh, dissipation factor for high frequency materials used in the printed circuit board industry. The agenda that I plan on following is shown here. First, I'll talk about some of the electrical characterization capabilities that we have here at Rogers. I'm going to go through that rather quickly. After that, I'll talk about a brief overview of common RF material test methods. And this is really test methods uh, that are used to determine the DK or DF of the material uh, that are a, that is basically material test methods, not a circuit test method. The circuit test method I'm gonna talk about is the following bullet, and that is RF characterization using microstrip differential phase length. So with that, let's take a look at some of the capabilities that Rogers has for RF testing. And this is not all of them. <clears throat> the first uh, couple of bullets, the X-band clamp strip line test, I'm going to talk about more in the next few slides. Full sheet resonance test, I'm also going to talk about more. The long strip line resonator test is going to be somewhat similar to the X-band clamp strip line test, except just a kind of a longer version of it, physically longer. Uh, SPDR, I'm going to talk about more in a few slides, and then the rest of these I'm really not going to touch on. Uh, but they are capabilities that we have. And then that's the uh, material characterization, uh, the first portion of information. And then below that is circuit testing methods. So that's characterizing the material by a circuit evaluation. And we have several different ways of doing that. The most common is differential length method for microstrip. You, and we get from uh, that method, we get a wide band insertion uh, loss characteristics from about 10 megahertz to 110 gigahertz. And then the next line down is uh, worded very similar except differential phase length method, again, using microstrip transmission lines. And that will give us DK results that's very wide band, DK versus frequency. We can use grounded coplanar, uh, grounded coplanar waveguide, and we can also use strip line circuits and have. We typically use microstrip. Uh, and then the very bottom bullet is uh, a variety of different circuits that we've used in the past for test vehicles to determine dielectric constant and sometimes dissipation factor. So let's get started with the first test method. This test method has been around a long time, several decades actually. It is the X-band clamp strip line resonator test defined by IPC. And the IPC definition is called out down here at the bottom. And you can go to IPC.org and get a lot more information on this test method. Essentially what it is, uh, it's a test method that we use as our uh, QA uh, processing and also our process control and it determines the dielectric constant and dissipation factor of the material. And basically what happens is after we've made the copper clad laminate, we will etch all the copper off and then we will have the substrate, the raw substrate itself, be the dielectric material in this clamp fixture. So in the clamp fixture, we have clamps on the outside left and right that apply pressure that clamps together and then in the middle, this blue line is actually a very thin resonator circuit. And I've got a top view of that in the upper right. And really what it's showing is a single conductive circuit that has feed lines on both left and right, a gap, and then the resonator elements. So this uh, test method, when it's all clamped together, will be ground signal ground, ground signal ground, S, and that is a strip line configuration. The resonator is very loosely coupled, and uh, that is the test. Here is some pictures of the equipment. On the left, a network analyzer we're using, and on the upper right is a wider view of the clamped fixture me mechanism. Bottom right, zoomed in a little closer. And on the bottom right, you can see there's two tan pieces of material in here that are being tested. That's the dielectric material being tested. On both sides of that, you can see very thin copper sheets and then the, the large aluminum clamps. The actual electrical ground is these very thin, smooth copper sheets. That's the electrical ground that goes down to the end connectors below this fixture. Uh, so this is basically what we do. After we make the laminate, etch off all the copper, put the two sheets or two pieces of material inside this fixture, clamp it together. It becomes a strip line structure. And then we look across a wide range of frequencies for resonant peaks and then measure them. What we normally do is we measure node four, as I pointed out here in a screenshot. The way this particular resonator is designed, is designed to resonate at half wavelengths at 2.5 gigahertz nominally. 
So the first node would be 2.5 gigahertz, second one about 5 gigahertz, third about 7.5, fourth node is usually what we measure at about 10 gigahertz. Uh, what we do is we zoom in very close to each one of these nodes when we measure it to get the center frequency and then also to get the bandwidth and the Q measurements. The formulas that are used for this test method are very straightforward and easy actually. So epsilon sub r or dk, that's determined by n, in this case it'd be node four, so the number four, c is the speed of light in free space, fr is the center frequency that we measure, l is the physical length of the resonator element itself, and delta l is something we need to determine, and that is electrical lengthening uh, due to fringing fields. So basically you have fringing fields between the feed lines and the resonator element, and that fringing uh, actually causes a little bit longer electrical length, so we account for that. And then for the dissipation factor or tan delta, that's essentially a bandwidth measurement or a Q measurement. And we subtract out the Q or the loss associated with the conductor effects of the resonator uh, circuit itself. And that's how we get dissipation factor. So the pros and cons of this test method and every test method has pros and cons. Uh, that's just the way it is. Uh, the pros and cons, the advantages for this test method, it is testing a homogeneous uh, medium. We have uh, very simple equations, being that it's trip line, there's no dispersion to worry about, no radiation to, to be concerned with. Also, uh, we're measuring the dielectric constant and dissipation factor in the Z axis of the material. So we're measuring the thickness axis of the material for DK and DF. It uh, allows us to measure uh, multiple measurements of a sheet of material. So we can look at within sheet variation of the material. And then also the operator dependency is very little. So it's a pretty accurate uh, test method and very repeatable. Now the dis disadvantages uh, are, uh, one is that it is designed for one thickness only, uh, 60 mils thick for most of these materials. <clears throat> it can be a different thickness, but just by the definition per IPC, it's one thickness only. Uh, and then the clamped mechanism as the clamp strip line, you, that means you will have some amount of entrapped error. And error is a low DK, so you're going to report a lower dielectric constant than what really should be reported. For what we're doing for material characterization and ensuring very consistent material, um, this error entrapment doesn't really bother us. However, it can give a little lower DK value than what should be expected. And because of that, we offer another DK value called design DK that is a value that uh, does not have this entrapped error and more appropriate for the circuit design. Uh, also, as part of this test method, it does have some sensitivity to anisotropy and materials with high anisotropy can be more problematic for uh, accuracies. Next test method is FSR, full sheet resonance test. This test method is defined per IPC. Again, you can get on IPC.org website and get the details. Really what it is, is measuring a copper clad laminate and having the copper clad laminate behave as a open walled parallel plate uh, dielectric loaded waveguide and setting up a standing wave and measuring the uh, resonant peaks. So here I'm given a screenshot of FSR testing a panel and node one zero refers to one half wavelength along the length axis of the panel and zero wave or zero half wavelength along the width. And then node two zero is two half wavelengths on the length and zero uh, waves on the width. Node two two, we do not measure. Actually, we only measure node one zero and node two zero because the nodes above that can have wave interference patterns and you don't get the clean symmetrical uh, resonant peak that we really desire. But node two zero is basically saying there's two half wavelengths resonant on the length and there's two half wavelengths on the width. Uh, as a general statement, we are measuring larger panels about 12 by 18 or 24 by 18 inches in size and large means longer wavelength. Longer wavelength translates to lower frequency. So this is a lower frequency test. The formula is given here, basically I'd rearrange it to uh, obtain epsilon sub r or dk and we measure F, S, F sub R, which is a center frequency. C is a speed of light in free space. M and N are the node numbers. So if it's node one zero, M would be one, N would be zero. This term would go away. L is the physical length of the panel, and that's it. You get the dielectric constant that way. The advantages are it's a non-destructive test, whereas the previous test, uh, the clamped, F, clamped strip line test, 
we actually have to etch all the copper off the material to test it, which means we can't sell that. So it is a destructive test. This is non-destructive. We can get a DK measurement on the panel itself and then send that panel out to our customers. And if they want, they can do a correlation study between the FSR results and the final circuit and how it performs to get a good correlation between the FSR numbers for DK and the performance of the circuit and then have their circuit fabricator have different sets of tools for different DK values that are obtained from FSR and they can bend the different sheets coming from us into circuit fabrication to fine tune the circuit fabrication so the final circuit is very accurate. It is a pretty fast test. There's very little operator dependency, which is good. Uh, the disadvantage though is it's measuring the dielectric constant only. And because the open weld structure, we have some radiation that's difficult to account for. In reality, you really can do that and obtain the dissipation factor. It's just rather tricky to do. So we normally just obtain the dielectric constant only. Also, the uh, disadvantages would be that uh, as part of that would be it provides the average dielectric constant of the sheet being tested. It will not give you within sheet DK variation. So it just gives you the average DK of the entire sheet. It is thickness dependent. So a thinner laminate can have a different result than a thicker laminate. And that's not because of the material as much as the copper. When the copper planes are close together in the case of a thin laminate, that affects the phase response and it affects the DK value. When you use a thicker laminate and the copper planes are farther apart, the copper has less effect on the phase response and then you get a little bit different value. In general, the more accurate number is a thicker laminate where the copper is not affecting the phase measurement. Uh, lower frequencies, uh, of course, this being that we're testing a larger panel is gonna be at lower frequencies. And that means uh, it could be uh, we're getting DK results at frequencies lower than how the material is being used, but that's just kind of the nature of this test method. SPDR is another test method that stands for split post dielectric resonator. It's a pretty quick test. Uh, it has minimal operator dependencies. For more details on this test method, Keysight's got a really good paper there and I've given a link for that. This test method is testing the XY plane of the material not the z-axis, not the thickness axis. The previous two test methods, FSR and the clamp strip line test, does test the z-axis or thickness axis. This tests the xy plane only. Now, uh, what's nice about this though is we sometimes use a combination of SPDR with FSR or the clamp strip line test to get an idea of anisotropy or how different the DK is on the xy plane compared to the z-axis. So we do that sometimes with SPDR data combined with FSR, our clamp strip line test, or even the microstrip test. We have the capability of doing SPDR at 5, 10, 15, and 20 gigahertz, and we could actually uh, use that data to extrapolate to higher frequencies if we desired. The pros and cons for this test method, the advantages are that it's relatively quick and it's pretty user-friendly. Uh, also, assuming that you can measure the thickness of the sample very accurately, then the DK measurement of this test method is also going to be accurate. The sample thickness measurement is critical though. Uh, also, you can put more than one material in this fixture, the SPDR, and get a composite DK or composite DF. So if you're combining materials in a multi-layer build that are different, like a laminate and prepreg that have different properties, you could put that in SPDR and get the composite DK. Again, it's gonna be the XY plane though. It will not be the Z axis DK. And I already explained that we use SPDR sometimes with these other test methods to understand anisotropy. Disadvantage is this does not test the z-axis or the thickness axis. It uh, can have some accuracy issues when testing materials that are glass reinforced or materials that are, have uh, very polarized uh, fillers. And that's just the nature of this uh, test method. And then also the accuracy again is highly dependent on how accurate you can measure the sample thickness. Now for the microstrip transmission line test, the other tests I've talked about so far are material tests where I'm testing raw materials. This test is actually testing actual circuit. This is testing microstrip transmission lines. And what we do is we have microstrip transmission lines on the same sheet of material in very close proximity. They are exactly the same in every way. Every part of the design is exactly the same. The only difference is physical length. One circuit is shorter in length than the other usually a four to one ratio. They are 50 ohm microstrip transmission lines. And then what we do is we manipulate the microstrip phase response formula to account for circuits of two different links, which is delta L in the formula. 
delta phi is the difference in, physical, in the uh, phase angle measurement of the two different circuits, long and short circuits, at frequency f. From that, we get the measured affected dielectric constant. After we're done measuring the circuits, we will destroy one of them and do a microsection at very high magnification to get the exact measurements of the circuit for substrate thickness and copper thickness. Once we have that, we put all the data into a software, a field solver, or NWI 2019, and from that, the software would tell us what it thinks the effective dielectric constant is. Based on that, we will adjust the dielectric constant in the software until the effective dielectric constant of the software matches the measured, effective, uh, measured dielectric constant we measured on the circuits. Once the software's effective dielectric constant matches the measured effective dielectric constant, whatever DK value accomplishes that, that's the DK value for the material at that one frequency. We increment the frequency and then we repeat the process. What we get out of that is a very wide band DK versus frequency curve. In this case, about 33 megahertz going out to 110 gigahertz. The advantages of this test method is we're actually testing a real RF circuit and there are not a uh, fixture type of uh, variables associated with it. The results are wideband, so if you want to use this material at several different frequencies, you do have DK across a wide band of frequencies. And then the reported DK values um, of, uh, of this test method is the DK values of the material and the circuit influences both. So it's kind of a real world measurement as I see it. Disadvantages, you, uh, we cannot get the dissipation factor very accurately. Uh, it's kind of a long story. We actually can, but it's just not easy to do. It's not very accurate sometimes. The DK results are specific to a microstrip structure, but they are approximately okay for strip line and ground coplanar waveguide, but there is a little difference there, but it is based on a microstrip structure and that needs to be kept in mind. And then finally, the normal circuit fabrication process variation can alter the accuracy of the DK results. However, the way I look at that is it's a disadvantage, but it's also an advantage because it is a real world type of DK number that we're given. So that's all I have uh, on this topic. And I invite you to become a member on our Rogers Technology Support Hub. We're very proud of this website. We have a lot of good information here. As a member, you can have access to calculators, and software, free software for download, Raj mobile apps, technical papers, we have video library, and also you have the ability to contact an engineer in your region. So thank you for your attention and have a good day.